I, I wanted to talk about my, uh, just a couple of things. One is my introduction to VISTA. And I remember it well. This was in September of 2001 at the uh, OSHCA, the Open Source Healthcare Alliance meeting in London. And I had gone there to present GTM, which we had open sourced uh, earlier that year. And uh, two employees from the VA, Chris Richardson and Rick Marshall, flew out to London to talk about Vista. And they had actually flown out on their own dime. And this was the last session of a two-day conference. There were about, uh, I'd say, maybe 30 or 40 people in the room. So if you can picture it, we had a screen on this side where we had the, the, the speaker and the projector. And on this side, there was the audience. And I was sitting on an extra chair sort of on the side. So I could see both the speakers and the, the audience. And they finished the presentation and ended up with a, ended the presentation with a, um, a video of Vista. And now imagine this. This is the last presentation of the day, last day of the conference. It was a Friday evening. I'm sure people are eager to go home, go get a drink, whatever. But at the end of the talk, there was total pin drop silence in the room. And it's probably total pin drop silence for perhaps 20 seconds. That's a very long time for a room of 30 or 40 people to be quiet. And then, and then there are a couple of people whose jaws are sort of hanging open. And finally, the first words out of someone's mouth, and this is a, a physician, the first words were, that's exactly what I want. And now, to me, I'm, a, I'm, I'm sorry, I touched the mic. I'm a, I'm a geek by training uh, and by profession. And uh, so in the software business, anytime a user tells you that's exactly what I want, you pay attention. And so um, the, um, the fact that this is a doctor who said that's exactly what I want in response to, to a presentation on Vista made me realize that maybe this was something that was, that was interesting, that was worthwhile. And then I got more involved with the Vista community and went on with uh, Rick and Chris and a bunch of others to, to co-found a, a nonprofit called World Vista, which um, you know, went on to sort of try and establish a Vista community. But that was the beginning of my involvement, and I remember that. And it's um, you know, what got me interested and kept me motivated um, you know, getting into Vista. So. So that is one thing. And, and I guess the other interesting thing is um, I, I don't want to take responsibility for a whole lot of things. But one thing that I will take responsibility for is, in some sense, the uh, being a catalyst at one point. And instead of being a catalyst in the, along the lines of the guy who lights a, a match in a room full of gunpowder, um, maybe. And that was that um, about the time, but for completely unrelated reasons, we actually decided to open source GTM. And we open sourced it in, in May of 2001. That was also the time that there was this, this interest in Vista. And there was an interest in an open source stack of Vista. So it was almost the perfect storm. So once we open sourced GTM, that sort of enabled a lot of the, the open source interest in, in Vista. And so it sort of caused things that is in, in some sense perhaps the, the, the catalyst that um, caused things to take off. So it was sort of fortunate in just sort of doing the right thing at the right place at the right time. And I guess if someone famous said uh, he'd rather take uh, lucky than smart, and uh, we were just lucky. So that was the, you know, how I got a, a, in, involved in Vista. Um, and then I'm sure you've heard the history of World Vista uh, from many people at, at many times. Well, we, we started World Vista as a 501c3 nonprofit. Uh, I think it would have been um, 2002, 2003. I forget exactly when. And uh, we started as a, as a nonprofit to, to, to promote Vista. And um, it had a bit of a, a rocky beginning uh, because we, we created a nonprofit and then we wanted to use the term open vista and for whatever reasons 
the, the term open vista ended up being copyrighted by or trademarked by Medsphere, and then we came up with World Vista EHR as a, and, and also there was at, at that point there was different management at, at Medsphere, and there was these meetings that uh, that we used to organize, and um, they hosted a meeting. And the meetings, the World Vista meetings, were always hosted by some organization. You know, the organization provided space uh, without charge, and World Vista organized the meeting. So they um, hosted a meeting and then called it Medsphere One and promoted it. And the result was that, you know, through that time we had participation from the VA. Once there was this sort of big commercial hoopla with this meeting, people from the VA just dropped out because they didn't want to touch it with a 10 foot pole. And it took years to go back and earn the trust of the VA and we renamed the meetings to the Vista community meetings and you know now they've re-engaged but it, it, it is a process you know once you lose trust it takes years to to gain it back and I think one of the things that actually got um, the trust back we called, called it Vista community meetings and then we kept them scrupulously clean with regard to commercial involvement for a long time and then also at one point when um, CMS had the Vista office EHR project, World Vista was involved in that, and that again got got World Vista an opportunity to to re-engage with the VA, and um, and again the, the rest of it. I think um, the, that software was released. It it did what it was supposed to do. It got some recognition, um, and and basically gave Vista a lot of credibility in the in the market. Okay. There's actually a couple of other stories I can tell. Are there specific things that you wanted to ask me about? Well, I, one of my questions was the Chinese stores, but uh, one of the questions was about the Chinese stores. Yeah. Uh, and I would say in some sense it's, um, it's resilience. I think um, anything that has evolved over such a long time, as, uh, over, over as long a time as Vista has, and anything that has um, had so many different people working on it and so many different people directing it, um, you know, you'd, you'd expect that it's a mix of, you know, all the way of things going all the way from the truly excellent to, to the truly horrible. And um, and the fact that it has stayed, you know, maintained some sort of integrity in spite of all of these differences, and the, f and the fact that it it's as useful as it is in um, in patient care, and and actually it's one of the probably a couple different systems where there's actually evidence that that shows that it actually improves the quality of care. I mean, that is the in some sense the gold standard. Anyone can throw together a software system. But it's it's rare for the system to actually have evidence that it improves patient outcomes and improves the quality of care. Vista is one of the systems it has, and it's been a surprise that um, you know that, that something that was essentially thrown together by so many people with over such a long time without any clear architect, you know, or a sense of direction, still is as as good as it is, and um, that's been interesting and surprising. It, it does, and, and the fact that it's bottom up, and I think perhaps the most important thing was the, and again, I can relate to this as a, as a software person, which is that um, anytime you have the users and the creators working closely together, you're more likely to have a successful outcome than if you have someone working in an ivory tower trying to, you know, to create something, and if they do that, then there's a certain sense of elegance that you really, you know, for, for, for and, and, and that does happen every once in a while. Witness the fact that, uh, you know, Tom this morning talked about Steve Jobs and Apple, and that clearly was, you know, I wouldn't say he was in an ivory tower, but certainly came from, the vision came from a small, from, from a very small group of people, and perhaps even from one person for, from in most cases. And the reason that succeeded is, again, I think he was able to integrate the, the use as well as the, the technology. 
you know, the majority of us perhaps are not as talented as, as Steve Jobs was. And so I think the, the fact that the Vista culture brought together the, the programmers and the users is the, the key to its success and the key to its uh, the fact that in spite of being a mishmash of, of code and technology still has the successful patient outcomes. Well, I think uh, a common programming paradigm, and, and I'll confess to programming this way most of the time, is what I call software development by muddling around. So you create something that sort of works, and you show it to someone and say, is this what you want? Is this what you meant? And they say, no, well, it sort of does this right, but I want it to be different in this way. And then you go back and you modify it. So, so you sort of keep, um, you know, wallowing around and around and eventually you get it right. And I think that that's, uh, that's actually a very important um, principle that gets missed. There's a, an old book, um, it's called the, um, something like the psychology of everyday things. And one of the points it makes is that in the old days, well, let's say you had a, a village market and a potter selling his wares in the market. The fact that that potter was making things over and over again and it wasn't a mass-produced thing gave that immediate feedback where if something, if some type of pot was not getting sold, he immediately knew that he had to make a different type of pot and he could talk to people and find out what they wanted. Whereas in the case of mass production, you know, you design a, a teapot, you make the molds of a teapot, you make a million teapots from the factory and you ship them out and the teapot happens to have the handle stuck in the wrong place. You're not going to know about it until you've made these million teapots. So I think this, uh, this close interaction again is important. I'm not sure that I entirely answered that question. Yeah. Okay. Well, for people to do do things, or for people to work at things, I mean, there are fundamentally two reasons. You have to make money and have fun. And you've got to have both. If you're not making money, you're not putting a roof over your head, you're not happy. And you have to have fun because if you're doing something every day, if it's not enjoyable after time, you know, even if you're making a lot of money, then you start to feel you have golden handcuffs. So I think that what Vista does is there's enough opportunities in it for people to, to make money. And both from the fact that it works and from the sense of community that, that we have with Vista. Um, there's the fun and, you know, as human beings, we enjoy interacting with other human beings. And so I think that uh, that Vista as an ecosystem um, allows people to do both. Do you have any other good stories for us? Um, I think, yeah, I actually. And you know, I have one other question. Sure, go ahead. As, as a co founder of uh, Vista, one of the, the, the area of inquiry that interests me is in the leadership of our people itself. What is the secret sauce that allows you? Well, I wish I had a good answer for you there because I think that uh, I was perhaps not as successful as a leader as I, as I could have been. And I think that World Vista as, a, as an organization, I can, let me talk about the things that I think World Vista has done well. And let me talk about the things where I think it has not done so well. And I think the areas where it has done well is it has done well in terms of creating a community and bringing the community, community together. So 
what w World Vista has done well is the Vista community meetings. Um, it has done well in terms of establishing a central place where people can collaborate. I think the things where it has not done so well, and uh, by the way, World Vista has also executed project-related things like Vista, the Vista Office EHR project. Where it has not done so well is in fact in, in acting as a, um, as a custodian of the code. So if, you, if, you, if I look at, let's say, the Linux Foundation versus World Vista, there, I mean, there are commercial distributions of Linux like Red Hat and SUSE and so on. The Linux Foundation is the custodian of that code and it's a trusted custodian. World Vista has, in, has a server but has not been successful in putting out releases. So they've advanced the code in a number of different ways. They've not been very successful at putting together releases of World, World Vista. So back to, I think, um, where World Vista has been good is, I think, in terms of giving people a vision, giving people a sense of community, bringing people together. Where it has been less successful is in channeling those energies and in terms of actually coming up with process for managing software and releasing software and making it available. Well, there's a, a couple, I think. It's important to, you know, we, we, it's easy to focus on the successes of Vista. And, and Vista is very successful, don't get me wrong. But I think we also learn from our failures. You know, we learn from our successes, we should learn from our failures, and we should acknowledge them. And I think it's important to acknowledge the places where Vista has been less than successful. And th there's a couple that I'd like to, like to point out. one which is both a, a success and a failure, which is spectacular in both these, is actually the um, Mexican Social Security Administration. So at one point they had something like at least 60 hospitals running Vista and they were rolling it out to two hospitals a month. And part of what they succeeded, uh, the, the reason they succeeded was they, they did to Vista rollout what Henry Ford did to the automobile. They had teams that were trained in doing this implementations. They had a network of hospitals that essentially had the same process by virtue of the fact that they're the Mexican Social Security Administration. They ran this set of hospitals for about one third of, excuse me, just a minute. Hi, can I call you back in a few minutes, Roger? Um, maybe you can. Thanks, bye. Sorry about that. Um, so um, they had a set of a team of people, they would go into a hospital, they had the same, the hospitals had the same business rules, the same clinical processes. And uh, so they would go in, in, in a, within like, a, they had a, like a six week cycle, so they'd standardize the implementation process, they would go in, do the implementation, train the people, move on to the next hospital. Highly successful. Now some of the, another one of the elements of the success was they had a CIO who basically told his people, implement this if you want to keep your jobs. So that was a wonderful incentive. Well, that was also, you know, the seeds of success and the seeds of failure. Because what people did was they basically went in and they implemented Vista the way you might implement, um, you know, paper clips or whatever. So each of those Vista installations is frozen and static. So they'd go in, they'd implement it, and that was it. There were no patches, no updates. They and then they took a lot of shortcuts. They weren't even procedures that allowed, you know, if the if the system crashed to recover the database. And so all of these things they just overlooked. And those are not things that you really notice. Um, because on, on the first day you have the software running, you can demonstrate it, but these are the things that you have to do to keep it running. And being in the software business in some sense is like being in the newspaper business or the magazine business. If you put out this week's edition of your magazine, 
It only means you put out this week's edition, you still have to put out next week's edition, and the week after that, and the week after that. So it's a continuous process of, of update, and, live, and that leads us off to a business. And I think they, they didn't recognize that, and that was one of the reasons for the failure. The other is that, you know, the, I don't think they fully appreciated the, the integration between the IT process and the business process. So I um, had a chance to visit the, um, the largest women and children's hospital in Mexico City. And when I was there, they, um, this is a hospital with about, um, I think, a capacity of 200 beds. According to VISTA, they had 800 patients, inpatients. And the patients are clearly not sharing beds or lying on the floor or whatever. Well, it turns out that when they discharged patients, the patients would just pack up and leave. They never actually went into the VISTA system to you know, register the fact that they'd been discharged. And uh, so when I, when I visited them, they were actually planning a patient inventory. So they were going to set aside one day where they were literally going to walk around the hospital and find each patient and then anyone who was not found was eventually discharged. And the other one is not a clinical story, but sort of a personal story. And in another visit, I visited the largest trauma center in trauma hospital in Mexico City. And I was at the, um, the triage desk of the emergency room. This guy had literally just came in. He had chopped off the end of one of his fingers. And he was standing out there holding his finger, dripping a little blood on the floor and shaking. Next to him was another guy with a bag of ice with the you know, the chopped off end of the finger. And for one thing, I was actually glad at that point that I'd gone into, gone, that I was an engineer, not a doctor. But the other thing was that the, there was a physician at the triage desk who was desperately trying to bring up this person's record. And it wouldn't come up because the network land was overloaded with people downloading videos and so on. 50 feet away in another segment of the LAN, response was excellent because there was nobody else on that uh, that segment anyway that um, probably but the you know was, was, uh, hopefully that is an interesting story if it is a personal story but uh, something that got discussed anything else anything from guy in the say for the last 20 years oh uh, no probably not. <laughs> Okay, I'll, I'll say that, and uh, there is actually one other thing that I, my name is uh, K.S. Basker, B-H-A-S-K-A-R, and everyone just calls me Basker, it's the, it's my last name, but it's a long story, that's what everyone calls me. And the other is at the Vista community meetings, when I introduce myself, I always say, I give my name, and I say that my goal is world domination with free and open source software, so give them one, that's what I'm after. <laughs>